Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today we are using some uh, new products from the new Inkbot Shop release. This is called Bubble Words. Uh, it's got large um, bubble cursive um, sentiments in it and I think that it is absolutely adorable. I totally love it. Um, and it comes with all of these little like bubbles, splatters, um, they kind of go around the words uh, and so that's what I'm doing here. My what what's the word I want filming area my yeah like the area that my camera views is pretty small um because the way that I have I have like a, a cheap um camera mount so it's built of pvc pipe and that pvc pipe sits right in front of me so that my camera hangs I actually film upside down um well not me I'm not a vampire but the camera uh, so it makes it difficult when I need to stamp a horizontal card in my Misty. That's why I'm, we're going to be doing a lot of turning. But anywho, um, so I did move those little pieces around a little bit to fill in those gaps because I wanted this to look like graffiti. Why did I want this to look like graffiti? Well, this is the whole basis of my <laughs> this is the whole basis of my card design. The reason that I wanted it to look like graffiti is because when I saw Tiffany, we were chit chatting. Tiffany is the um, owner, illustrator, all things wonderful for Inkblot Shop. Um, oh, C1, C4, C5. Keep that in mind. I know we're hopping back and forth. It's a short video and I have a lot to say. So anyway, when I saw Tiffany, um, she was telling me about how when she originally sat down to create the set, her thought process was to make a graffiti set. And then she drew these um, just super cute, happy um, cursive bubble letters. And her then she showed it to her kids. And her kids were like, Ma, this is not graffiti. And she was like, yeah, I'm aware, but it's super cute. And I'm, I'm going to go with it anyway, which I'm glad she is because I really do love the set. Um, but so because of that, because of that conversation, that's kind of what I had in my head. So I wanted to help her achieve graffiti status. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm putting in this brick behind it uh, in order for it to look like graffiti. The reason that I mentioned the C1, the C4, and the C5 is because typically I am a C1, C3, C5. I don't think that you need the colors in between. However, a very wonderful YouTube follower donated um, their... Copic markers to me for some classes that I want to do in the future someday, please Jesus. Um, and so I had those, which is a good thing because um, the other day I was, at, what was I doing? I was teaching. And so Nathan was home with Eric. And when I came home, when I came in the back door, um, they had made me cards and the cards were like propped up at the back door. Um, which was totally adorable. But then the next night when I sat down to make this card, I could not find my C3. I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, and I looked for at least 20 minutes. Eric looked when he came over. We could not find it. It has since turned up randomly on the floor, of which it was not there originally. Uh, and I know it wasn't because it was on the floor right underneath my craft desk. And we looked there 16 times. Um, so I'm thinking that today when Peanut was card making, maybe he had it somewhere and it, it resurfaced. But anywho, so I will be linking the C3 because that's actually what I would recommend that you use, not the C4, though it did serve its purpose. Uh, but anywho, for the bricks, I'm just freehanding this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not the focal point of the card. Uh, it's just the background to, you know, give it that scene feel that I am looking for. In order to create the bricks, you saw what I did. I just used my lightest marker, which was a C1, um, to go in and just lightly sketch um, the brick pattern. I'm not super concerned about just drawing right over the um, stamping because my the colors I'm going to color it are dark enough to cover up a C1. Now, as we get into the shading, you know, there'll be shading to the left and the right where the bricks are meeting each other um, and a little bit under, like on top and underneath. So the only point that it gets a little bit tricky is when you're working around the words, um, but that's not really a huge deal because again, they're not super dark colors. Um, so even if you do get a little bit of you know, your C4 in there and you go over it with the, if you color it the same way I do. Now, if you're trying to do pastels, you, you need to be more careful. Um, 
But if you're using mid to darker tones, don't even worry about it. So basically just add shading to the left and the right and then, um, you know, to the top and the bottom. I wanted my bricks to be white. Uh, this also kind of looks like a basket weave pattern to me as well. Um, so you could do this on a smaller scale for a basket weave. Now you guys know me, you know I love me some rainbows, you know that's what's about to go down here, right? Totally, totally coloring this hello in rainbow. Um, I had actually originally, I had intended on sharing this card, this video, um, a couple of days ago, but I finished the card at about, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning, and so my photos were taken at night, which means I have a whole photo set up for at night. Um, natural um, light photos are preferred. And just because of how light this card was, uh, and my background is also white for my photo board and I was too lazy to change it. That's just real talk, people, I just was. Um, there wasn't enough contrast and the, the photos came out like trash. So I ended up waiting until um, I had time to take them during the day, which was today. And so that's why you're getting this, this video tonight. Um, but anywho, I'm doing um, three color blends for each one of these. Uh, the way that Tiffany drew them, there's already like lines in there. Um, and instead of um, leaving that to be the lightest area, I'm actually just following those lines to add the shading because I'm going to go back in with a white gel pen and add the highlight over those. Um, as far as blending the color families together, if you've watched any of my other videos where we're doing that, you just want to pay attention to um, the last number. The, when you're looking at the cap of a Copic, um, those numbers do mean things. We're not going to get into all that, but the last number. So if you have a, I don't know, a B06 and you're trying to blend that into a B04, a four and a six are close enough together that it should work. Now, the only exception to that, as I've said in the past, is the yellows. The yellows are different. I blend a Y02 into a Y08 with no issues. Um, just because the yellow tones are all so similar when it comes to Copic markers. The shadow color that I use for my yellows is actually a YR, um, which is an orange. So anyway, the reason that I love this set so much, besides the fact that I think it is completely adorable, is because it reminds me very, very much of high school. So I'm old school. Before texting was a thing, I did not have a cell phone in high school. They weren't, I mean, for the majority of my high school, they did not even exist except for the very affluent. Um, and even then they were like the Zach Morris cell phones <laughs> where they weighed like 16 pounds and had to be connected to your car. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I used to write notes. That's what I did. And I've always been a, a doodler, a, you know, colorer, things like that. So I would write, like, I would draw the, like, the person's name um, that I was writing the note to, which was typically my boyfriend. Um, so I would draw their name, like, super elaborate. And one of my favorite ways to do that was cursive bubble letters. And it got to the point where, like, when I was, you know, depending on who I was dating, that I could do it freehand without having to, like, map it out or anything. I was just so used to drawing it, I could just do it freehand. Uh, so this reminds me very, very much of high school. The other way that it reminds me of high school is back then, um, one of the trendy things, and this was a new thing back then, was gel pens. Gel pens were everywhere, and gel pe pens were fabulous. Now, the only kind that was out back then was the um, Sakura gel pens, and they still work famously. They're, it's still the one that I use to this day because I have loyalties. Um, and so but they have all different kinds of colors and they were all typically pastel or like neon colors and so we used to write on our hands like you draw pictures on your hands you know like i love brad i never even dated a brad i don't know who brad is but that just seems like a name of somebody you would like in high school doesn't it um but anyway so we would all like draw on our hands so when gel pens became super popular and we realized they would in fact draw on skin um I was like commissioned by pretty much everybody I knew <laughs> to draw on their hand. We have to go back to the card. So now the coloring's done. It did not have enough contrast for me. Um, so in order to make it more 
bold and I guess more graffiti like I decided to do this large bubble around it now I'm doing this with pencil real talk if you put a Copic marker over pencil it's going to trap it you will not be able to erase it I wasn't that concerned about it because I knew I was also going to do a border but even though it will cover the pencil up you will still see the lead shining through um, so if you're going to do something like this that I'm doing and you're not going to be doing the outline, which will typically cover up the pencil, um, then you need to erase this to be as light as possible or you need to freehand it. Um, those are pretty much your, your only two choices because of, you know, just that, that pencil lead is shiny and you'll be able to see it even though you put the dark marker over it. Filling this in, I find it to be much easier to go ahead and put like a safety outline around um, my image and then start to fill in the large portions of color. That just seems to be work, what works best for me, but you do whatever works best for you. I would have, in hindsight, um, I would have outlined all of this first. The ink that I stamped in, while it is wonderful for Copic coloring, it is not the like the blackest black and so there was a difference in the outline so I did need to go back in with my EK success journaling pen and um, outline everything and I wish I would have done that before I colored in everything solid black because <laughs> it would have been easier to see the lines but anyway back to high school so I was like commissioned by all of my friends to draw on their hands um, you know what whatever it was was their thing their boyfriend's names or their if they played a sport um jersey numbers were popular um and so it just this whole set reminds me very very much of high school um and i think that it's it's adorable um yeah so just super cute good job tiffany good job um so here i'm just taking that white gel pen and outlining this Again, if I had to do it all over again, I would probably add more bubbles or splatters of black coming off of this bubble. I think I would have liked that better, um, but I didn't. Like I said, it was late uh, and decisions were made, folks. That's pretty much what happened. So here I'm using that same gel pen to just add highlights to the letters and the spatters. Um, and then I'm going to go in with just a glitter pen because, I mean, honestly, if I was a graffiti artist, I would always have a can of glitter spray paint to make sure that my stuff was shimmery because I just couldn't leave it like that. Um, I never graffitied anything, actually. I had a friend who used to, like, draw graffiti things under the bridge uh, near where I lived. I'm sure I'm not the only one who knew a juvenile delinquent, um, but he was actually really talented. I don't think he ever really did anything with his art, though. Um, so that's a bummer. But anyway, so I did feel like the brick background was a little bit large for the focal point. So I trim this down and then I'm just using some foam tape. I'm going to pop that up over a black card base to kind of balance out some of that color. And then, I mean, really, honestly, that was pretty much it because I just think that, I don't know, the sentiment's so cute. Like, it's just, it's totally enough to carry the card. Um, I didn't add any rhinestones or anything to it because graffiti-wise, that wouldn't make any sense. Um, but that's it. That's the whole card. So this release is live. I will link it below. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.